Hello and welcome to my first seasonal reading vlog of the year. So I've been thinking about this for a while um, and, I, and I'm going to do a seasonal reading vlog every month for the rest of the year. So September is the month that fall starts aka my favorite season. I mean I did name my daughter right here Autumn uh, so it shows you how much I love the season. Um, and I thought I would do a like fall reading vlog where I read really fallish kind of cozy books and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I have three books right here that I'm going to plan to read this week and I am just really excited for it. Before I get into telling you what the three books that I'm reading this week are, a quick word from the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers phone, video, and text chats with therapists. You don't know, I struggle with anxiety. I talk about this all the time. I think a lot of us do, and that's okay to talk about. Um, I struggle with it a lot for a while quietly because I think, again, a lot of us do. But recently, ever since I had my first child, I discovered I had postpartum depression and anxiety and I still deal with that today. I'm also dealing a lot with my personal family life and things like that but either way it's okay to talk about and it's okay to ask for help and BetterHelp is here to help you do just that. All you have to do is go online and fill out a questionnaire where they will ask you more specifically what your needs are for therapy. Maybe you have different anxiety, maybe you deal with depression, maybe you have other things. The questionnaire is there for you to figure out exactly what you're looking for out of therapy. When you do the questionnaire, you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours, which is amazing. From there, you can schedule your first meeting with your therapist. And what's awesome about BetterHelp is that you can change your therapist with no charge. Because I know sometimes, you know, when you meet a therapist, sometimes you just don't gel and you could tell maybe this is not gonna be the best fit. It's okay to ask for a change in therapist. Therapy is there to help you, not to hinder you. So ask BetterHelp for a change change in therapist and it'll be no charge at all. So join the 3 million plus people today that have taken charge of their mental health by asking for help from BetterHelp. If you're interested in BetterHelp, I will leave all the information down below as well as a link to go check out BetterHelp. If you go to www.betterhelp.com slash bookables, get your first month at BetterHelp for 10% off. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to talk about it. There is no shame in asking for help. Trust me, I know as a person that tries to have it all together we don't and it's okay to realize that and it's okay to ask for help so check out better help like i said the link and everything will be down below so again i thank you better help for sponsoring this video and let's get back into the reading vlog okay so the three books i picked out i'm sure you've seen it a lot because i put it in hauls and things like that main book that really started this whole um reading vlog for me is this book the cafe between pumpkin and pie and actually i read another book in this series a couple years ago called the bake shop of pumpkin at pumpkin and spice which I bought this because the cover screams fall and part of a series I believe the first one is the cottage on pumpkin and vine which I should read as well these all take place in this town called Moonbright, Maine and like I said they're by three authors this one has Maria Andor, Kat Angle, and Stacey Finn so they're all gonna be just really fallish and I'm very excited for that one and the other two I have planned, I have The Simplicity of Cider by Amy E. Reichart. This is about a woman that owns like an apple orchard and then a single dad starts working there and feelings start happening. So I figured apple orchard, this could be set in the spring, but I figured apple orchards are very popular in the fall. People love like apples in the fall. So I figured this might be fallish. I could be biting myself completely for this and it might be set in like the dead of summer. We'll see, but I'm planning to read it this week regardless. The last book is The Late Bloomers Club by Louise Miller. She also wrote The City Baker's Guide to Country Living, which I enjoy. This one is about a woman that owns this diner who is happy serving apple cider donuts, coffee, and eggs, and then she discovers that people want to sell her diner and stuff like that. And again, it could be set in the spring or summer. I don't know, but it sounded fallish to me. So I know at least one of these books is a fall book. The other two could be a total miss, and this could be a total miss fire reading vlog, but we're gonna go with it anyway. So these are the three books I'm planning to read this week and I'm very excited for all of them. I definitely be starting off this one because this is the one I'm most excited about. Do I think I'll love any of these? No, I think they're gonna be just fall QT reads and that is perfectly okay with me. That is what I need right now. So that's what we're gonna go with. So we have three these three books. Yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do. So I'll see you when I see you.
Hello everyone, happy Thursday. Sorry the lighting's not good. It's just not that great in my kitchen, but I wanted to update you. So I finished a story in the Cafe Between Pumpkin and Pie. Like I said, this has three authors in it, so it has three short stories. They're all not super short. Like the first one was like 141 pages, I believe. Anyway, so the first one was called Love Over Easy by Kay Angle. And if I could give this a rating, you know what? Since it's seasonal, let's do pumpkins instead of stars. I would give the first story like a three pumpkins. It was all about a character named Hannah who grandmother owns kind of the Moonbright Diner which is very famous in this kind of series if you will and Moonbright tradition where on Halloween Eve if a, like a single woman says like this chant that um, a mirror or some sort of reflective surface will show her the kind of outline or who her husband is and so basically Hannah does that and then she meets this guy named Jake who she's kind of known from her past it was okay it wasn't amazing it was you know really cutesy so I gave it a three out of five um I'm interested to see what the next one's gonna be um the next one is what is the next one called Love Rising by Stacey Finns and I do believe actually Donna Kaufman was a big part of the series and I just learned that she passed away which is very sad because I remember enjoying her story in the last book but I'll have to teach you when I have um the next story read hopefully I read that today I have started another book that's not on this list I just totally forgot because I like to read an ebook as well when I'm especially when I'm rocking autumn and stuff um the book I started was Spelled for Forgetting by Adrienne Young which is a really anticipated read for me I just I've never read anything by this author but the synopsis sounded just so folklore and mysterious and things like that I literally just started it so I don't know much about it yet so I'll update you when I do know all I know it's about this island and magic there's also a mystery like murder mystery thriller going on and it's just very atmospheric already so I'm enjoying it for that matter but yeah, I'll have to turn that to you. I'm eating lunch right now. I've been go, go, go because it's back to school. So it's like school, therapy, taking, you know, it's a lot. It's going to take me a while to get into my routine. But yeah, I'll update you um, later. I want to update you. I actually finished a book. So I did finish The Cafe Between Pumpkin and Pie. <laughs> she loves looking at herself in the camera. Um, overall, I had... I was correct about my feelings on it. I told you guys I like the first story. I gave it like a three pumpkins out of five. I've since read the two other stories. The second one was called Love Rising and I would give that one, I think it was my favorite out of the three. I would give it like a three and a half. It was about a character, I forget her name, but she's basically back in Moonbright because her grandmother passed away and a guy that she knew in high school is coming over to like do construction in her grandmother's house that she had no clue about. So it's kind of like a hate to love romance. I like that one um that was probably my favorite and the last one was called love on tap and this one was like two it took two timelines it first started like in high school with these two characters and then it picked up like seven years later and they kind of reconnect um and i gave that one a three out of five as well overall what i would give this whole book a three out of five i really wasn't expecting to give it anything more because i knew the stories were going to be very fallish and stuff like that i knew they wouldn't have enough grit to them if you will because they're all short stories um and one thing I really didn't like about this book is that, you know, I know it's a short story and things like that, but the characters, like, they took, like, three quarters of the short story to, like, get to know each other, establish it, and with that last 10%, they, like, are, like, madly in love, and I'm like, this just literally happened out of nowhere. So they're all very insta-lovey, which... I don't hate, but I just don't think it was that great. So I would say read this if you really want like a small town vibe, really very fallish because it's very reminiscent of like kind of Gilmore Girls, if you will, with like Stars Hollow, where they have the annual festivals and things like that. I didn't love it, but I wasn't expecting to love it. I got I got out of it exactly what I thought I would get, which would be a just cute fall time. So I gave it a three out of five. I wasn't disappointed by any means. I will say I did like the second book in the series a little bit more. That's called The Bake Shop of Pumpkin and Spice. I don't know. Take with that what you will. I mean, if you just want a really overly fallish time, check it out. Um, moving on to my next Sorry, <laughs> My daughter really is very invested in this camera. I decided for my next read it would be a The Simplicity of Cider by Amy E. Reichart. I don't know if I told you guys this is taking place on an apple orchard and I'm doing me more research on it. I am correct that it's fallish. It takes place like in late August, early September. Boom, right where we're at. So I'm very happy about that. So it's kind of got a fallish vibe. So I'm expecting a lot of apple cider and things like that. Um, so I'll let you know. This is a very short book. Like I was looking 
looking to see how many pages it was and it's like 300 pages. I don't know, again, I'm not expecting a lot of this one because I have read a book by this author called The Coincidence of Coconut Cake, which again, was just okay, so. We'll see. I'll update you when I update you. I am still reading Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. I am taking my sweet time with it because I am really enjoying it. I think I'm only like three chapters in and I'm just really enjoying the kind of mystical atmospheric vibe. So like I'm like I think I'm really going to love it. I hope so at least. So I'm taking my time with it. So that's my update for now. I gotta go because this kid is just really invested in this camera and will not let me film unless she is in the middle of the shot. So I'm back really quickly again because I wanted to share with you some of Autumn's favorite seasonal reads. So I did a whole reel on my Instagram of like favorite fall um, kids books because yes, I'm a seasonal reader and yes, I make my kids seasonal readers too because why not? So <laughs> this is our like little sunroom playroom. This is where I keep like most of Autumn's books um, and I just changed them out for fall. Even with Noah, we're still figuring out what books she likes and things like that. So she does have some true favorite Halloween books, so I, like Halloween fall books. So I thought I would share them with you. First up, um, this is one that I had never heard of before and I got it from the library and I will definitely be buying it. Um, and that is You're My Little Pumpkin Pie. It is so cute. I know it's a series. They make ones for like Christmas, things like that, but it is just so stinking cute. If you want like a really cutesy like Halloween book, like this one's great and she loves it. Go. There's a the better angle. Another one that she loves and also Noah loved when he was younger is it's Pumpkin Day Mouse. It's part of the mouse series. We have a lot of them like, you know, um, if you give a mouse a cookie, if you give a moose a muffin, that one's my favorite. Um, but this one is just great. It also really teaches great like emotions. I use this a lot for Noah when he was younger to teach emotions and she really likes it as well. So it's gonna be a good teacher for her. Um, so she loves that one. Another one is that she loves that I got for review a couple years ago is called Open the Witch's Door and it's just one of those open the flat books and she loves open the flat books I have come to learn. Um, Noah wasn't crazy into them when he was younger. Just goes to show you every kid's totally different but she loves it. This is just like a cute little Halloween witchy book. Highly recommend. Uh, that she doesn't really like a lot but I personally love is one I found from the library called The Scarecrow and this is a story about a scarecrow that's so so lonely and then one day a crow perches on his nest and he is just so incredibly happy but it's full of beautiful imagery like beautiful drawings um, and it's just a really heartwarming story. She loves Wheels on the Bus, um, and I have this one I got for review a couple years ago as well. This one's Halloween, so it's like the ghost on the bus say boo. You know, it's just a typical Wheels on the Bus, but only with a Halloween twist. She loves it. She wants to hold it right now. Let's see what else I have. Oh, this is another one I, I get a lot for review for season one, and I'm so happy to. Like, Noah's got a ton for Christmas and fall that he loves that I've got for review just sporadically. Like, I don't ask for them. They just show up, and I love it. So a lot of these are either from Penguin, I think, or Random House. But anyway, happy Halloween corduroy. We really didn't get into corduroy in this house. No one ever got into it, and this is the only corduroy book we really have. But it's really cute, and again, she enjoys it. And the last two books, um, 10 Busy Brooms, I personally love this one. It's like a counting book about 10 witches. It's super cute, I love it. And then this one is probably my personal favorite. It's called What is Fall? Again, I got this for review from Random House. And it's just the way, the reason I love it so much is because of its shape and how just beautiful it is. Like there's a pumpkin and they make it to pumpkin pie. There's acorns and I, with um, things like that like donuts. It's very beautifully shaped and beautifully like pictures and things like that. Next week, or in a couple of these, I'll probably show you some of Noah's favorites because I keep all of his books in his room. He's got like this whole shelf. Like we have a lot of, we have a lot of toys because of kids, but we also have a lot of books, which I love. Those are just some of her favorite um, fall ones. And I can't wait to see what she'll read and what she'll like for Christmas. We'll see. I already have a feeling, but I like to try. And I always say, if like you like, are like, oh, I don't have like, I don't want to buy books that my kids won't like. I totally get you. The library is a great option. I got like five books from the library for the fall and she didn't like a lot of them, but she ended up loving this one. So it's a good way to see um what your kid will like before you buy it if you want to buy it so highly recommend doing that i love the library i go there every single week that's not an exaggeration um but yeah i just thought i would show you that really quickly because we're seasonal and this whole reading vlog is seasonal so i thought why not
it is Sunday. I didn't vlog yesterday because it was mainly like a day where we just did a lot of housework, cleaning, and all that fun stuff, so not a lot to say. The lighting's not that good because it's raining outside, so just forgive me for that. Um, I do want to update you. I did finish another book. It was not the book I told you I was going to finish. That book was over there. The book I finished was Spells for Forgetting by Adriana, by Adriana Young, um, and I really enjoyed it. So I'm still having a hard time figuring out what I'm going to rate this. Maybe as I'm talking to you guys about it, I can process it. So this book um, is definitely a book to read in fall. It's very, it's set on a small island like off of Puget Sound called, oh gosh, Sorsha. Sorsha Island? Sorsha Island? I don't know. It's spelled kind of like Sorsha Ronan, you know, the uh, actress. Um, and on this island, we have a character named Emery. And Emery has been in love with August for forever, but something happened 14 years ago that kind of pushed him off the island and she hasn't seen him since. And then he shows up one day on the island out of the blue because he's there to bury his mother. Um, August was kind of everyone thought that he killed this other girl on the island named Lily and basically he comes back and it's stirring up a lot of past and things like that. This also has a lot of paranormal aspects into it, mostly like witchy vibes. It wasn't overly witchy, much to my dismay, <laughs> but the um, Emery comes from the Blackwoods who are like witches. They have the spell book and so they do a lot of chants and things like that. The island's kind of steeped in folklore if you will and I really enjoyed it. It's definitely a book that's being pitched as like a kind of like atmospherical kind of spooky read and it is to some degree like the writing is definitely very interesting in regards to the island and how the author describes it and how like kind of this island kind of keeps you there and how the people there are very manipulative and things like that but it's mostly a book about Emery and August and you know trying to realize that these island town people are just kind of not the best and they're all hiding something of they're all hiding something for when the character Lily was killed a long time ago. Something about that night doesn't add up for any of the characters. So that's what the whole book is about. Um, we follow mostly Emery and August. We do have a couple of uh, other like townspeople's um, perspectives thrown in there, but it's mostly Emery and August. And I really loved her love story and how they just felt connected, even though it's been 14 years since. So like. When I finished it, I was like four to five. I don't know where exactly. I'm leaning more towards a five just because even though I finished it a couple days ago, I'm still remembering a lot about it and reminisce about it, especially the end page. I really enjoyed the end page. Um, but I think I just wanted it to be more like witchy, if you will. I thought it was going to be more witchy and I thought the item was going to have more like magic. But I'd say this is definitely a book that's like has a mystery thriller element in the back of it, but it's mostly about like deceptions of people people and kind of a very atmospheric driven novel but I think overall I would give it a five. I did really enjoy it and I would recommend it. I don't think this is going to be a book for everyone though because I just don't for some reason but I really liked it. I don't know what it is. This year I'm really digging the atmospheric kind of slow burn type of books and this one reminded me a lot of um, The Inheritance of Orquita Divina. Um, where it's kind of like it's magic but it's kind of not about magic if you will it's more about family or more about townspeople in this folk but I enjoyed it and I'm very glad I read it it's definitely a good book to read this time of year because the book starts in fall and it's kind of like about the last scraps of fall on the island so I want to go back to the book I was reading The Simplicity of Cider by Amy Reithart I think I'm like 50 pages in um so there's that um it's raining today. I'm trying to make the house very cozy. I have a candle lit, you know, the usual um, kind of fall. <laughs> okay, so I thought I would share with you Noah's little reading nook. So this is a thing we've done for a while now. I have a read thing and then I have two little kind of like gutter shelves, if you will. And I do it seasonally. Um, when it's after Christmas, I really just kind of put his, some of his favorite books as you can see that's all Halloween books right now <laughs> um and he has a whole bunch of books over here oh, I have to preface this by saying this you guys know my son has special needs he's autistic uh, and he goes through phases like any kids with sometimes he loves reading sometimes he doesn't right now he's kind of in a season of not reading a ton but 
These are some of his past favorites. Um, Room on the Broom. He actually came to love this a couple of years ago. He hasn't been into it since. He's always loved Curious George. This is Halloween Boo Fest. Um, I probably have about three copies of It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. He will always love Charlie Brown because that is his favorite. He also loves this one. It's called Duck Duck Dinosaur Perfect Pumpkin. It's part of his series. It's great. Um, and this is personally one of my favorites, and he actually really enjoys this one as well. Wish I had better lighting for you, but I don't. It's just literally beautiful pictures explaining the season changes. And this has other ones. Like we have, I have all of them. I have Best in Snow, and I have Raindrops Roll, and there's a spring one that he's actually not into. But this was obviously my favorite because of fall. Like I said, another copy of It's a Great Pumpkin. He loves Pete the Cat. This is Trick or Pete. This is one of those like spooky ones where you kind of like slide and find. This is a favorite of his for sure. Even monsters need to sleep. I love it too. Another Pete the Cat one. <laughs> um, Where Do Diggers Trick or Treat. This is uh, kind of a series. The first one is Where Do Diggers Sleep. Um, this is one of his all-time favorites, Spooky House. He loves this one. It's a Lift the Flat book. He has, who he loves it. I think I bought it a long time ago on a whim. This is one I got through publishing, and he loves it. Grimmel done the Spooktacular Pet Show. Loves it. He also loves this one that I got to publishers. Go to Sleep Little Creep. Amazing. Oh look, she's reading one as well right now. Um, <laughs> oh look, what do you know? Another copy of It's a Great Pumpkin. <laughs> uh, Peppa Pig one. <laughs> this is one that my husband had when he was a child called How the Spider Saves Halloween. I have um, a Sesame Street Happy Halloween. The classic, recommend this to everybody, Little Blue Truck Halloween. It's a lift of flat book. It's amazing. And then the last one I have is another kind of Curious George one. So those are all of our Halloween books. And here, I'll show you. These are like all of his Dr. Seuss books. He went through a really big Dr. Seuss phase. His favorite of all time is Mr. Brown Can Moo. Um, this right here is a stack of library books we have out because I always have some library books out. And then there are these. We have lots and lots of books. We have lots of series like if you give a mouse a cookie like mouse school things like that we have some of his all-time favorites like no silly um this is a really fun one i should probably pull this out for um halloween there's a dragon in your book he loves that one we also have there's a monster in your book um we just have a whole bunch of books like these are all pete the cat we have a lot of he loves the dragon series by dave pickley is actually for like one day I got, I think I got, do you like my bike? I got a friend for dragon and then sparkling new friends and he loves all of them. So I went out and bought like all the dragon books. Like I have the dragon Halloween, the dragon Christmas. I have bought, let's have a sleepover. So I love publishing companies because a lot of times, you know, they really help to figure out what he likes. So <laughs> then I have a lot of board books still that he's kind of getting out of, but he still enjoys. Like he used to love Rosie's Walk. As you can see, it's beat up. Um, he used to love the brown bear. I have like, so I have brown bear. I have panda bear. I have polar bear. I have them all. <laughs> Um, I have some Curious George books. Like, I have so many books. And this is not even close to all of them. There's a lot in Autumn's room that I'm just storing for in case she'll like or for when they get older. Also, not to, not to forget, he had a really big and still has a big golden books phase. He loves golden books. I could fly. There's some Mickey Mouse that was... One of his favorites that's been beat up a ton is Time for Bed Elmo. What's my favorite? I'm trying to find. My favorite is The Sailor Dog Scuppers. Oh my gosh, I love that one. But we have so many golden books, and I will add to them, like, so many golden books. Like I said, we have a lot of books. We're now in my daughter's room. This is just a whole bunch of other books. Like, these are kind of some of the books that she likes that are not seasonal. I'm trying to rotate them out. Like, Five Silly Monkeys, Web Opposite. She loves that one. Other ones. It doesn't stop. These are more board books that I don't know if she likes, but she's not quite ready for. Like, the alphabet and things like that. But I have them here just in case. A little tour of all of my kids' books. I Like I said, they have so many books, and I will buy so any book they want, honestly. If they want a book, I will buy it because... I'd rather buy a book than a toy any day. That's just me. Nothing wrong with toys. As you can see, we got a lot of toys too, so that's just my thing. Hello everyone. Sorry I've been a horrible vlogger. I see this every vlog because I really am not that great of a vlogger. Hence why I do once a month. So I didn't vlog yesterday because my son was sick. <laughs> Second week of school, already sick. Welcome to germs. Getting, you know, all that stuff done. Luckily she's not sick yet. And hopefully it's just a cold. So he just had a fever and a cough and it was like a very low grade fever and that's been gone now for a while. So he's been out of school um, for a couple of days. So 
that's why I didn't vlog. So in that time, I have finished another book, The Simplicity of Cider by Amy E. Reichart. This looks long, it's not, it's literally like 305 pages. And you know, I had a grand plan because I knew this book and this book both had recipes in the back of them and I was like, I'm gonna make them, I'm gonna make this super fallish and it's just gonna happen and it's not. <laughs> I don't know why I think that I can do these things now, but I can't. I can barely keep my head above water these days. Why do I think I can cook a very elaborate recipe, especially baking? I'm a horrible baker. Cooking, I'm good at. Baking, no. But the recipe in the back of this was caramel. You say caramel or caramel? It depends on the day for me. Today I'm saying caramel. Caramel, apple, bread, pudding, which sounds amazing. But like it's, it's a little, you know, they even have you make your own caramel sauce. I'm not, <laughs> no, <laughs> anyway about the book i would give it a three out of five i liked it i didn't love it i kind of have the same feelings about it as i've had about the other amy wright card book i read a long time ago a long time ago called the coincidence of coconut cake where it was just okay it just wasn't a lot going on you know i will say I like this one more than that so i don't know so in this book we follow a character named santa who works at her family's apple orchard she works with her dad and she loves it she makes her own cider there where she like grafts trees like it's it's very intricate how to make cider i had no clue like the whole like kind of chemistry behind it if you will and then basically her dad hires this um single dad named isaac who brings his son um for like the apple season and she's very <laughs> santa's kind of reserved she doesn't you know like a lot of outsiders much less she doesn't like kids because isaac brings his um son bat sebastian who he calls bass and basically that's what the whole book is about we follow both santa and isaac and they're kind of, you know, getting into friendship and then romance and then also with Santa, you know, starting to be like, hey, you know, maybe I don't hate kids. It's because Bass is just a funny 10-year-old kid. And it's mainly about the apple orchard and family. And it's a great time to read it because it takes place, like, at the very end of August, early September. Like, kind of the apple season, if you will. Um, but overall, I liked it. I didn't love it. I, so far with these reads, I'm getting exactly what I expected to out of them when I told you guys that I was just expecting kind of a good fallish time. I wasn't expecting any of them to be over a 3 out of 5. So I'm kind of hitting my mark on that one. On to my last read, which, surprise, surprise... I'm only 52 pages in and I'm enjoying this more than the other two, which I was very surprised about. I was expecting to like this one the least, if I'm honest with you. Um, and that is The Late Bloomers Club by Louise Miller. I um, also think this is taking place right in the dead of summer, so there's that. Or maybe it's going to be like the very beginning of fall. One can hope. I'll let you know. But I will update you when I update you. I'll try to be better about updating. I plan for this vlog only to be a couple more days long until I finish this book. Um, and I'm also hoping to get my Bath and Body Works candles uh, in the mail so I can share them with you. Only about three because I don't go too crazy because I could. But I limit myself big time. <laughs> Hello, it's me. I look great because I just filmed because I really had to. But... I got the sickness. I knew that was going to happen. Whenever Noah gets sick, I am like always the next one to get it because that's just the line it goes in. So my nose is stuffed up. I don't feel the best. I'm sweaty. It's just hopefully it's just a cold, but oh, we all know like mom's power through it, but it's hard being a mom, especially when you're sick. Like it sucks when your kids are sick, but you can take care of them. But when you're sick too, it's like, it's not a fun combination. So it's going to either go to Noah or it's either going to go to Matt or Autumn next. I hope neither of them, but it always kind of goes through our house. Ugh. Just the immune system, just second week of school. Bleh. But I don't know how long this reading vlog is going to be. I, re I have no clue. I'm not going to finish it until I finish the last book. I'm like halfway through. I don't know if I'm going to read today because I feel like crap, but I I'll update you when I update you. I'm supposed to cook like a really good dinner tonight and I need to because the meat's thawing and I don't want it to go to waste. So I'll probably do that, but I'm not going to feel the best, but I'll update you when I can. <sighs> I don't like being sick. I mean, who does? But it just sucks. Hello, I lied. I'm back because I got my Bath and Body Works um, candles in the mail, so I thought I would share them with you. Um, like I've told you <laughs> previously, only about three because I have to contain myself because, I mean, I think a lot of us can buy a lot of candles, me included. And I already have a bit from last year. We have a visitor. Who's surprised? So I still have some from last year. In fact, I have like three of my favorite. My all-time favorite candle is Bath & Body Works Marshmallow Fireside. The first one I bought is pumpkin carving. It's kind of Halloween. Um, this one has notes of freshly carved pumpkin, spiced pumpkin seeds, smooth brown sugar. So there's that. And it literally smells very pumpkin-y, which is perfect for right now. So I'm going to burn this. I don't know if I'll burn this one first. But either way, there's this one. And then the other one I bought 
is pumpkin apple because I love apple scents in the fall. This one has notes of red delicious apple, fall pumpkin, fresh ground cinnamon, clove buds. So that's awesome, this one. It definitely, it's got a mixture of both. It's more apple-y, which is great. I love the apple flavor. The last one I bought is called Fall Festival and it wins for my favorite like design on it. And this one has notes of fresh pumpkin. <laughs> All of my fresh pumpkins, spiced cinnamon, and sweet maple almond butter. The almond buttery. I'd say the most pumpkin out of all these is definitely pumpkin carving, but there you go. That's all the candles that I bought. I bought three. So I also bought a couple of books because I went to Target today to get like stuff like, you know, diapers and things like that. And of course I checked the books. The first book I bought um, is Angelica Frankenstein find, makes her match by Sally Thorne. If you don't know, Sally Thorne is a very popular romance author. This is her first historical romance novel. It's like kind of a take on Frankenstein where it's about Frankenstein's sister and making kind of her own man, if you will. I'm planning to read this very, very soon because obviously if you can't talk about the cover, very fallish. And the other one I bought was kind of on a win and that is All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. Um, if you don't know, Ashley Flowers is the host of this really popular podcast. What podcast is it? <laughs> oh, I forget. Um, Crime Junkie. I have, I've not, I think I've listened to a couple episodes of it, but she decided to write her own novel. Obviously it's a murder mystery or mystery thriller. So this is my haul today. Two books and three candles. Yeah, I spent some money. <laughs> um, like I told you guys, I'm still reading this. What page am I on? I'm on page 130. So I'm almost halfway through. I would like to finish this today, but I don't know. I don't feel horrible, but I don't feel the best. So. I'm going to share with you guys a recipe. So this is a lasagna I make all the time. Here's all the ingredients you'll need. Sorry, the cans are empty. And this is minus the um, beef and sausage you'll need. But it's the Pioneer Woman um, lasagna. And I make it um, quite a lot in like the fall and winter months. Um, number one, because it is a huge meal. Um, this will feed a lot. This feeds like for two meals in my house. Not only my husband and I, my dad, my daughter, um, and I'm so we'll have it for dinner tonight and then we'll have a dinner for the next day. So it's a great meal to do so. So yes, it's a lot of food, but if you split it between two meals, it is a great price, I think. It's delicious. I just wanted to talk about it because I recommend it. And I get compliments on, on a lot. It's not my recipe at all. I'll link it down below. But if you're just looking for a great lasagna recipe, look no further than this one because it is delicious. It's bubbly, it's fantastic. It's I didn't vlog yesterday because I was feeling really bad. Also, my little miss got sick too. So the only one that's coming out of this unscathed for the moment is Matt. So lucky him. <laughs> All three of us got the crud. Um, I'm feeling a lot better today though. You know, I'm just still congested. She's kind of not feeling the best, but she's still in good spirits. I'm going to officially end this vlog because I just need to. I did finally finish. Ugh late bloomers club and again it was okay i gave it a three out of five i think my problem with this i think i had a really good idea of like reading all very optominal books in one video like it's you know a good idea but i think the problem with it is that they were all books i kind of already had a feeling of how i was gonna feel about them does that make any sense probably not but you know i knew that none of them will probably be I knew that none of them would probably be like a favorite. I thought they were all just gonna be kind of middle of the road, just very fallish, and that's all well and great, but I think reading them back to back is not the best idea, at least for me. So I think that's kind of put me in a somewhat of a reading slump because I'm just not reading the best this month. Also, because I'm sick, so that could be that. <laughs> But either way, um, I told you this book is about a fall character named Nora who is, owns like a diner and she inherits this like house and land and um, she lives in a small town and company like kind of wants to buy her land and there you go. It's another great kind of small town book where she writes a lot of Guthrie. Um, I think it's in Maine. Overall, I read four books in this vlog, which is a lot for me. Yay. Um, so I read three really fallish, cozy books, I guess you could say. I read um, The Cafe Between Pumpkin and Pie, The Simplicity of Cider, and The Late Bloomers Club. And then I also read a very atmospheric book, Spells for Forgetting, which is definitely my favorite book that I read for this vlog, for sure. Highly recommend it. Very different, very kind of dark and atmospheric, if you will. Out of these three, I don't really have a favorite. They all gave me very autumnal feelings, very kind of small town, romancy feelings. I'd say like don't go in as expecting a five out of five just go into them expecting a very fallish time does that make sense i don't know but either way that's that um i look horrible because i feel i don't feel horrible you know how it is when you're sick you're just like 
like when you already like I feel like I don't look good every day because I'm just kind of blah as it is but when I'm sick it's like extra blah and that's what I'm feeling kind of extra blah you know hair makeup like makeup, you know what I'm saying um skin all that just kind of extra blah so that's what we're doing with today either way that's my reading vlog. Thank you for watching. It was probably extremely boring. I'll be back at this next month with like a spooky theme. Maybe I'll do better with like filming and things like that. I don't know. But I'll tell you my next read that I'm reading right now. I'm about to start is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix because it's on my 22 backlist books I want to read. And I know the adaptation is coming out really, really soon for it. So I want to get to it. But as always, thank you for watching. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And don't get this crap that's coming around. Bye.